What's going on, U.S. History people? It's your boys, Mr. Norris. And Mr. Lawrence. And we have video 24 for you today. This one is on industrialization. We're going to go over causes of it and four key industrialists that you absolutely positively must know to succeed in U.S. regions. So what helped facilitate or encourage industrialization in the late 19th century? So we're talking about the late 1800s couple things you should be familiar with we're going to break each one of these down but we have technological innovations energy sources natural resources transportation and communication these five things together be able to identify and explain how they contributed to industrialization all right so looking at technological innovations in energy sources of this time period so we're talking about the after the Civil War, you're seeing the growth of major industries in the United States, also the growth of something known as the corporation. So when it comes to certain technological advancements, we look at the Bessemer process, and this was used to mass produce steel. This is going to be very important because we're going to start to see urbanization with the growth of cities and skyscrapers, also very important for transportation with the growth of railroads. You need steel, so it's really a quick understanding is it's injecting air into iron ore, which helps to make steel uh, more efficiently and quicker on a large scale. And steel stronger than iron, right? Absolutely. So energy sources of the time period is oil will be very important used in engines. So, so for the first time, we're seeing the mass production of internal combustion engines that will use things like gasoline, but oil will be needed to produce um, that gas led to rushes in many states in order to gain control of the land that might be able to drill oil and, and make a fortune from it. And we also see the emergence of a guy by the name of John D. Rockefeller and his company known as Standard Oil. So they will have a huge amount of control within the oil industry early on in the United States. Also considered the wealthiest person to ever live. If you adjusted his wealth for inflation, he would be the richest man ever. So natural resources and transportation. We have things like timber and minerals out west that were very valuable and needed for industrialization. Led to environmental transformation. So you had entire forests that would be destroyed for timber. Um, Comstock load was a very popular silver mine that was discovered in Nevada. Or is it Nevada? 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 Nevada. Nevada. And many other places out west people are going to try to find minerals there too for transportation talked about the transcontinental railroad in a previous video that was completed in 1869 and then in the early 20th century we're going to see the development of the automobile which will become very popular under henry ford all right so moving on to communication advances very important to understand the telegraph lines that were set up um, really kind of grew during the Civil War to help mass communication using Morse code. Uh, this will help the expansion west as railroads move west. In conjunction with the development of railroad lines, we see the construction of telegraph lines. Also, by 1876, a guy by the name of Alexander Graham Bell helps to develop the telephone, and we will eventually see its mass production around the world. This will increase communication throughout the United States, specifically as the U.S. and Americans are moving in what direction? West. West. So four key industrials that you should be familiar with. We have John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, and Henry Ford. You need to be able to identify the industry that each one of these bad boys are working in and some achievements under them. So Mr. Lawrence, why don't you tell us about John Rockefeller? All right, so I briefly mentioned John Rockefeller earlier and he was very important in the development of the American oil industry. So he was considered a titan in the oil industry. There really wasn't anyone comparable of his power and influence in American industry, specifically in oil at the time. He owned 90% of oil refineries in the US. Again, circle, underline, star that 90%. That's quite a lot of control of the oil refineries. And what are we refining oil into, Mr. Morris? Gasoline. Gasoline, and it's gonna be used for engines, can be used for transportation, and with the growth of the car, it's going to be essential for the growth of the American economy. It had a virtual monopoly on the industry, so this is where one company controls all aspects of the industry. So there is no competition in a monopoly, and competition is really the basis of the American capitalist system. So what could he do with his prices if there's no competition? He could raise them as high as he wanted, and people, if they wanted his product, are still going to have to pay for it because they can't go anywhere else to buy it. 
Another dude you should be familiar with is Andrew Carnegie, a Scottish immigrant in the 1800s. He was a titan in the steel industry. He really helped perfect the Bessemer process that we discussed earlier. Um, he had his headquarters in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh to be exact, hence the name Pittsburgh Steelers, the football team. He pioneered what's known as vertical integration. You see that underline, please circle it for us. What this means is one business owns all aspects of production from start to finish. So he owned the land where the iron ore would come from. He owned the factory that produced the Bessemer process to create the iron. He owned everything that would then ship that iron. So from start to finish under vertical integration is when a business owns everything from the beginning of a product to the end of it. It never goes to an outside company. And Andrew Carnegie is later going to sell his business to a man by the name of J.P. Morgan. So J.P. Morgan will buy Carnegie's business. It was known as U.S. Steel. And he will become one of the wealthiest men really ever, not only in the United States, but really you could compare him to um, wealthy people around the world. So rich he gave the American government alone one time. So he was considered a titan of the banking industry and countless other industries. So he uses his power within finance to expand his control into many different industries, not just banking, not just steel. He loaned the US government money after a major panic. So he helped to stabilize the American economy by giving them an actual loan or by giving the United States government an actual loan. Also, one of his companies was eventually broken up by the government, which we will talk about more in our next video when we start talking about trust busting. Finally, we'll finish with Henry Ford. He did not invent the automobile. A lot of people think Henry Ford did. He did not. What he did was, was invent the automobile. He made it affordable oh. via the assembly line. So um, he introduced or pioneered the assembly line for the auto industry. And you see here a picture of an assembly line. This is where workers would have a specific task to do over and over all day. So for instance, they would just screw the lug nuts onto a tire over and over, and that's all they would do for 10 hours a day. So the mass production of the Model T, which became the best selling car for decades, was able to be produced cheaper because of the assembly line and then other car companies are going to adopt his methods. So with that process, when you bought a Model T, you really didn't have a lot of choice and different options of what it was gonna look like or what was gonna be in it. But because of that, you were able to produce a much more affordable car. I think there was a famous quote that said, you could get a Model T in any color as long as that color was black. Black, that's right. So not a lot of choice, but made it affordable, helped to expand the growth of the automobile. All right, so let's quickly recap. Our video for today so reasons for the growth of industry you have to know technological innovations energy sources natural resources the growth of transportation and communication across the United States and the four most important industrialists for this time period needs to know for your final exam is John D Rockefeller from oil Andrew Carnegie of steel JP Morgan of banking and Henry Ford with the development of the mass production of automobiles specifically what automobile Model T the Model T is correct all right, guys, thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you back here for video 25, state and federal government attempts to regulate businesses because some of these industries are becoming too powerful and too wealthy. So the governments are going to try to restrict that. We'll see how successful they are. Thanks for watching. Best of luck and have a good day.